Sometimes it seems that the pull of the past grows stronger as we get further away from it. As it recedes into the distance, it calls to us, imploring us to come back. Nowhere in China is more famous for its gardens than Suzhou. More than 50 gardens are open to the public here, and it's a number that increases every year. A visit to Suzhou is a reminder that gardens are not just places to see, they're places to be in, places to feel, places to touch. No matter how similar two gardens may be, every garden is a unique individual creation, shaped by man and by time, with its own story to tell. But time doesn't stand still. It's impossible to turn back. Are the lives of the ancients, here among the mountains, water, flowers and birds, still relevant to us today? This is 87-year-old Xia Jiaxin, a retired piano teacher. Once, there was a mound, waist high, right in front of his yard. Xia decided to clear it away bit by bit. He never expected to find anything inside. <laughs> Xia says he dug up more than 20 rocks. He asked some experts to take a look at the rocks. They were amazed at what he showed them. These were no ordinary rocks. They were rare Taihu rocks. Until about a thousand years ago, Taihu rocks were quite abundant in and around Suzhou. Then they ran out. Ever since then, these rare stones have commanded huge prices, and stories of lucky people digging up a treasure trove of Taihu rocks have become part of local folklore. As the rocks become scarcer, enthusiasm for making Taihu rock gardens grows. Once it's been dug up, a lot needs to be done to a rock before it's ready to take pride of place in a garden. The 
The people of Suzhou love gardens. Few of them can explain why. They just do. Nobody knows exactly how and why Suzhou people got their love of gardens. But the important thing is that Suzhou people continue to love their gardens just as their ancestors did. Xia Jiaxin has always loved gardens. He doesn't care about the monetary value of the rocks. For him, their meaning, their spiritual value, is the only thing that matters. However, he didn't know what the essential elements of a good garden were until he started making one of his own. His rock garden is dotted with tiny pavilions and pagodas. It's almost as if he transformed his tiny backyard into a miniature version of the Chinese landscape itself. Like he's captured the majestic panoramic views of mountains and lakes depicted in Chinese watercolors. Why does he like it so much? What's the secret? For answers, perhaps we need to go underwater. It's hard to imagine how our ancestors got rocks from the bottom of lakes without the sophisticated equipment we have today. Taihu rock is actually a kind of limestone which has been eroded by the waters of Lake Taihu. The lake began life as a quarry more than a thousand years ago when the craze for rocks like this first began. <laughs> Both the underwater rocks and the ones around the lake shore have been leveled off. The conditions endured by the underwater quarrymen who began working the lake more than a thousand years ago must have been tough. They had to dive to the bottom of the lake, holding their breath, and then slowly, bit by bit, resurfacing every few minutes to take a breath of air, chiseling away at the rocky outcrops. When that was done, they were hoisted onto boats and sent to market on canal barges. The fleets of barges sent by Emperor Huizong of the Song Dynasty were called the Fleets of Flowers and Rocks.
。宋代末年，宋徽宗在开封造耿月，令苏州人朱勉在苏杭这一带采集奇花异石。这个奇花异石呢，它装船，石船为一缸，所以称之为花石港。宋朝灭亡之后呢，那许多的这个湖石呢，就流落在了江南这一带。这个观音峰就是其中的一块。This rock ended up stranded in Suzhou when the boat carrying it sank. More than a thousand years ago, it now occupies pride of place in the grounds of a middle school, and is known as the auspicious cloud peak. It's said that it was originally destined for Emperor Huizong's Dunyue Garden. For the students of the middle school. The rock is a piece of history that they see and touch every day, something that brings their history and literature closer to them. Lion Grove Garden is a rock garden built on a grand scale. Rock gardens like this. Were relatively common during the Northern Song Dynasty. This is the only survivor of that bygone age. It's almost as if you can reach out and touch the lives of the people who lived more than a thousand years ago. But today, history is the last thing on the minds of these children. For them, it's just a great place for a game of hide and seek. Of course, the people who created these gardens are long gone, but they're not forgotten. Not in this garden, at least. Seventy years ago, another child loved to play hide and seek in this rock garden. Yu Mingpei, a boy who would grow up to become a famous architect. Stone is one of Pei's favorite types of building materials. The interplay between nature and design is one of the hallmarks of Pei's work as an architect. Back then, the garden had gone to rack and ruin. It was a mess, rocks scattered around. It was left to his uncle Jin Mei Pei to take the garden in hand. It took him and a team of expert gardeners nine years to restore the garden to its former glory. Known to some as Ham of the Rock Garden, perhaps a rather strange title, but he's the third person to proudly bear that title. He started working in the garden more than 60 years ago, helping his father restore the garden. <laughs> Very
Although his days as an active gardener are coming to an end, he still comes to Lion Grove Garden, the garden he worked on years before with his father. For him, it's a sacred place, a place whose flowers, plants, rocks, ponds and lakes are full of memories of his father. And the story won't end with him. His skills and knowledge have been passed on to his son, the fourth Han of the Rock God. However, the transition from generation to generation isn't always a smooth one. It's sometimes difficult for skills and knowledge to get across the generation gap. Han Liangyuan has sketched out his designs by hand all his life. Though his drawings are brilliant, his son doesn't always appreciate their quality. However, in the end, blood is thicker than water and powerful enough to overcome the generation gap. Father and son have always seen eye to eye on stone molding. Sadly, the father is beginning to see that it's getting a bit too much for him. It's time to let his son take over. It's time for a fourth hand of the rock guard. However they decide to arrange the rocks, ancient, time-honored principles lie at the heart of all their designs. <laughs> These rocks are not like the ones used to build ordinary garden rockeries. These are locally sourced rocks, washed smooth by fast flowing rivers and streams. Using such ordinary stones to create an artistic conception means that the stonemason has to be very skilled. It looks like a magnified work of Penjing. This design is the highlight of the garden. In a way, whether the final result represents Han's original intention is not quite the point. Generating a newer, deeper understanding of the stones is what it's all about. That's how each craftsman, each generation, 
bring something new to the art of rock gardening. It's what gives each garden its own individual story and unique identity. Each craftsman treasures memories of the bitterness of learning and the happiness of teaching. Every time they think back, it's like revisiting a home in their heart. Chicago Like most people in Suzhou, Jiang Yi has deep feelings for gardens. For as long as he can remember, he's enjoyed strolling the gardens of the city, gazing at the rocks and stones. But he never imagined that he would become quite as closely involved with garden rocks and stones as he has done. This former bodybuilder and factory owner never thought he'd end up making his living from stones. However, it's about more than money. Every day, his understanding of stones and rocks grows. And so too, does his love and appreciation of them. Stones are the bedrock of his life, both materially and spiritually. Through stones, he transcends this modern world of reinforced concrete. Stones put him in touch with the thoughts and feelings of his ancestors. If it weren't for rock gardens, the beauty of these exquisite works would be hidden from view. These gardens bring rocks and stones into people's lives. For many, it's love at first sight. However, a love of the past doesn't mean that Suzhou people ignore the present or fear the future. Suzhou's modern gardens delight in fusing the classical and the modern, harmonizing past and present. Suzhou is developing, moving forward, hand in hand with its glorious past.
fresh water, perhaps the greatest of nature's gifts. Down the ages, fresh water has symbolized health, purity, a better life. However, controlling it, keeping it as fresh as nature intended, has always been a challenge. Water, the great giver of life, can be a curse too. And perhaps that explains the myths that have grown up around it the world over. A vital element, the giver of life, yet the bringer of death too. Something that can never be completely controlled by man. Gardens, though, represent the harmony between human beings and water. Without water, there would be no gardens. It's human ingenuity that gets the water where it's needed and keeps it fresh. Jiang is anxious. The water circulation system isn't working properly. A problem commonly experienced in private gardens. He calls in the Suzhou Bureau of Parks and Woods for expert advice. If with modern technology at our disposal, garden water systems are still difficult to manage today, then how on earth did people cope back in the Ming and Qing dynasties? How did they irrigate their gardens? Indeed, it used to be said the real art of rock gardens lay not in the laying of rocks, but in making the ponds and pools. Nature may supply the water, without which there'd be no gardens, but people do need to lend her a helping hand. Water for gardens was usually drawn from the city's water supply, rivers or canals. Sometimes, water was diverted into gardens from a nearby spring. Gardeners in ancient times had to dig deep for an alternative. Many pools, like this one, in the Garden of Harmony, rely on wells for their water. A well, more than 10 meters deep, lies at the bottom of the pond. In the autumn, the pits of peaches can often be seen swirling and bobbing, where the well water bubbles up into the pool. Sadly, because of pollution and water shortages, wells are seldom used to irrigate gardens these days. Those that continue to depend on their own wells often go to great lengths to ensure that they're completely cut off 
from an external water supply. They can't risk being contaminated by polluted river water. Hayigana Water circulation remains a fundamental problem of garden management, and traditional solutions still have their role to play. One very effective way of keeping water fresh and aerated is to grow lotuses in the garden's ponds and pools. Lotuses have been grown in China for at least 3,000 years, and their ability to purify water has long been known. Research suggests that the roots of the plants filter the water and their leaves stop it overheating, preventing the buildup of microbes, typically found in stagnant pools. This is a village in Yongjia County, part of Zhejiang Province's Wenzhou City. Streets, houses, bridges, and memorial archways are laid out in an orderly fashion. They're all connected with the water supply. Everything here was built using local materials. Dams are made of stones from the bed of a nearby lake, and the walls are built of local mountain stone. Water flows through the village from east to west, and a moat surrounds the village, connected to a creek just outside the village. A gate controls water flowing in and out of the moat. Mountain streams provided the village with water for domestic use. It's based on traditional principles, evidence of the close relationship that once existed between man and nature. There's also a filtration system. Once again, it's low-tech and traditional, just a layer of broken tiles. This is also a brilliantly simple way of slowing the flow of water back into the river and ensuring that it doesn't unexpectedly burst its banks when it rains. It's an efficient system based on time-honored wisdom. It continues to prove its worth right up to the present day. Set amongst green hills and fields, this place is an oasis, even a paradise. Gardens are an expression of the relationship between humanity and nature. Nature shapes human beings. Human beings harness the power of nature. Nowhere is this more true than in Suzhou. 
Gardens are time capsules too, snapshots of the past, places where the influence of thousands of years of culture can be felt. Gardens are about more than the beauty we see right now, right in front of our faces. They're windows on a beautiful, glorious past. In 2001, Ye Feng and a few friends bought these houses. After they'd knocked the walls down of these individual courtyards, they had enough space for a garden. Their garden took them six months to create and is known locally as the South Shirpi Garden.我们今天如果让您听人去感受或者去回忆他手上所触摸到的五行的材质也许他会有一点点陌生因为他从小就是摸键盘长大的就是摸鼠标长大的所以对他来说鼠标一按一个世界就有了他不需要有那么多触摸
，呃，又是精细的，又是比较讲究火候的。Yeh has never strayed too far from his beloved gardens. He grew up in a house next to the old bee garden. Now he lives next to his own garden, one which he created. Sadly, the bee garden is no more. However, it lives on through him and his own garden. In this garden, in this vast garden, I'm completely unknown. You will feel that. 墙外更新鲜，但是当你到了墙外，再来看你的园林的时候，它其实又是一方乐土，它有它的精彩，也有它生命的特殊。Down the centuries, people have expressed themselves through flowers, water, and stones. There's nothing new about gardens and what we see there. Generations of Suzhou people have experienced the interplay of life and nature in these gardens. As spring approaches, Xia Jiaxin's old friends come to visit him. They're amazed by the changes that have taken place in the garden. Han of the Rock Garden has a new client, his son. Today, Han Liangyuan is going to teach his son to sketch. Zhang Yi has bought an excellent Taihu rock from his friend. The experts seem to have solved Zhang's problems with the water system. His garden will soon be ready. Meanwhile, in Ye Feng's garden, friends enjoy the scent of incense and settle down to enjoy each other's company, whilst the lotuses sway gently in the breeze. Just a garden. But so much more. Fine, fine. How? They can go to very far places. Even the trees, they are going to lose their leaves. I am the only one who can save the forest from the trees. I am the only one who can save the forest from the trees.